Course, what we'd like to be able to do now is to give you some excerpts from the interview that we just conducted today with uh, the uh, sister of slaughtered, assassinated, murdered uh, Miriam Carey. Uh, they're in Washington, D.C., in front of the halls of Congress going back a month and 17 days ago. We uh, were on the phone with uh, Valerie Carey, who is a retired New York City police sergeant who explained to me the state of affairs regarding um, the information she's been able to determine and ascertain uh, to date regarding the murder of her sister and, uh, and where the investigation has gone. And there are a couple of things I want to point out. One is that I'm going to ask you to participate in a petition that Valerie Carey has uh, put up, posted up uh, asking for your signatures to get uh, Attorney General Eric Holder to open up a uh, investigation into the death of her sister Miriam, a very beautiful young woman, shot down in the prime of life while her daughter was in the back seat of her 2010 Affinity automobile. Valerie Carey uh, has not been given, nor the family has not been given at this moment notification of the death of their family member. The uh, New York City Police Department, the Washington uh, DC Police Department, the Capitol Hill the Police Department, Secret, Secret Service, they've not as of today served this family with an official notice of the death of their uh, uh, loved one. And when the Carey family was able to travel to Washington DC, to view the body, they were told that they could not see the body. They were simply shown a photograph of Miriam Carey, but they were not allowed to touch nor see or to fully examine the body to make sure that the person that was alleged to be uh, killed was indeed their sister. That's number one. Uh, the other thing is uh, regarding the official notification, and I need to say at the outset here, I want to uh, state that we raised the issue that this woman was killed for purposes we believe to cover up an act with Obama. I'm going to get to that in just a moment. I'm going to tell you what uh, Valerie has said about that. But we in our zeal to report this put up the picture of Miriam's niece as a the little baby. That picture we put up in our broadcast was not the actual daughter of Miriam Carey and we want to retract that as uh, the, the wrong photo of the wrong person, and we want to apologize for having done that. And also in our haste uh, to uh, raise questions about uh, this death that I believe was an assassination, we made a statement such as uh, Miriam Carey's mother has thrown her daughter under the bus, and that is not the case at all. Miriam Carey's mother is a loving mother who's in a lot of pain who heard about her daughter's death over the news. And, and this very public death uh, is, is suffering quite a bit at present, and I don't want to add to that suffering. So it is uh, my deepest apology for having said that the family had thrown the daughter under the bus. That is not true. They are working uh, behind the scenes uh, as much as they possibly can to get done. But it doesn't appear that the courts, the politicians, police department, and others are willing to uh, step to their aid in this matter. Um, and we want to make sure that as this matter goes forward, and anyone else who comes forward with information would protect the, uh, the mother and the sensitivity of having lost her daughter in such a public, brutal way. I, I'm sure you can wrap your mind around the thought of what it would be like if one of your children was shot down by the police and accused of the awful things that Miriam Carey were accused of, and they were not true, by the way. Uh, the allegations that Miriam Carey was somehow or another a deranged, a psychologically cha challenged person is flat out, is a flat out lie. It isn't true. She was not. She was uh, taking postpartum a depression medication after giving birth, but from what I've been able to ascertain, a lot of women, and millions of women across America have done the same thing, that giving birth to a child can to some degree cause depression, and there's a medication specifically prescribed called postpartum depression medication that helps to be able to alleviate that 
uh, that stress. And, and when the uh, authorities, whether it was the FBI, or the Secret Service, did search her home, they found none of that. They only found a prescriptions indicating that she had been prescribed. That, but because she was taking her medication, there was none left in her home when it was invaded in what they called a search of the home of Miriam Carey. The other item that has been that had been flagged around uh, in the news was regarding a, a reaction that she had over a parking incident where she worked in Stanford, Connecticut with Dr. Oaken, who is a, a dentist and she worked alongside him as a dental hygienist. And because she has special privileges of parking, uh, and, you know, and, and I, I guess it was a discussion or an argument that erupted with uh, a, a person f from the white race uh, regarding who could park there and who could not. And, and, and so the argument was now being reported as bizarre and that as a result of her arguing over her privilege, and she did have privilege parking, they have elevated this in the information that has been picked up in the media. Uh, these two incidents, the fact that she was on postpartum depression medication and that she had an argument with someone over a parking spot that we've all done, including myself, that somehow or another that makes her mentally challenged a crazy. I think the first thing that I noticed about this and I've uh, found very, very strange, how is it that a woman who owns her own, own condo, this woman is a homeowner in Stanford, Connecticut, and she owns a 2010 Infinity automobile, very well manicured and taken care of. What's crazy? I mean, how do crazy people do that? And I immediately recognize that we're now looking at a smoke screen. And the, the other item that we are, we're not clear about, that Valerie, the uh, retired police uh, sergeant, New York City police sergeant, sister, said to me that she had made a wrong turn and it turned into the wrong area, sort of like a little cul-de-sac there. And when she recognized she'd made the wrong turn and all the police came running out, she just simply tried to turn around, which is what any average person would do. Now this is critical in terms of the information that is being dispensed. She made a wrong turn into an area uh, and when she tried to back up and turn around, one of the Capitol Hill police officers threw one of those iron barricades in front of her car. Uh, at the time she was driving away and and she just ran over it and that that got their juices going. So she went the right way on the street and, and tried to turn again and they cornered her there at the Capitol Hill building. Now. Valerie Carey says to me, and she's a retired police sergeant, not just no, she's a sergeant in the New York, New York City Police Department, says it's not clear now as to whether or not her sister had fully exited the car or not. Um, however, the reports we're getting that she, she did. But nonetheless, Valerie is also clear that there were no guns found in the car, that there's an affidavit I'm going to put up online for you to be able to see that uh, signed by a judge giving the New York, giving the uh, Capitol Hill police and Washington DC police the authority to search her car. They found nothing. They found no guns, no bombs, no intimidating letters, no threats, no anything. And the affidavit indicates as well that uh, the reason uh, for searching was not that she had rammed. Now, the new, and we've seen the video, and I'll show it to you again, but when the Capitol Hill police were inquired of a judge for the affidavit to legally search her, for the permission rather, to legally, to legally search her car, they did not put the reason for her, uh, for their search and for their final execution of her as that she either attempted uh, murder or that she had rammed the private go government property. None of those reasons are listed. It just reasoned that she, uh, that th there was an altercation and she's dead and they need to be able to search the car. So this one affidavit, I think, in fact, I'm confident will stand to demonstrate that Miriam Carrick was not a threat because had she been a threat, even they're not knowing whether she had guns or a bomb or something of that nature in the car, they would have indicated that in the affidavit. There's no such thing there. Now, talking with Valerie today, we certainly want to keep 
in mind, uh, the protection of her family, her mother in particular, but we also need to get to the bottom of this. And I was able to discuss with Valerie, well, why do you think your sister was in Washington, D.C.? She did not rule out. She did not rule in. She did not rule out that uh, her sister would have had a love affair with Barack Hussein Obama and that the baby is a love child. In fact, what I've asked Valerie the permission to do is to call for a public outcry that there be a paternity test done on the child that was in the car, done on Miriam's child to see whether or not the child is of uh, the estranged, if you will, uh, boyfriend of Miriam Carey, a Mr. Eric Francis, who lives in Connecticut, in Hartford, who now has custody of the child. But Miriam, uh, well, Valerie believes that a paternity test ought to be done to determine if this is Obama's love child. Now, she didn't say definitely that it was. She didn't say that. And I want to be clear about that, but she didn't say that it wasn't. And she believes, and I agree, there needs to be a public demand that the opportunity test be done to see, well, actually, whose child is, if it is Obama's child. Valerie was also clear and very clear uh, and logical in her thinking as a retired police sergeant that she did not know of any personal relations between Obama and her sister Miriam. Miriam. But you know, Miriam is, was a, and is a very beautiful young woman. I mean, you can see that. It's just, she's just very attractive. She's, uh, she turned any man's head. Um, so we don't know. She was in Washington. She was there with the child. I don't have concrete proof, but I think a paternity test is going to demonstrate that that's Obama's child, and that's why she went there. She went there to confront the father of her child. And the fact that you've not seen any public outcry about this murder of, of Miriam Carey is because there is a cover-up Afoot. Now, let me tell you about the depths of the cover up. Valerie Carey, the sister of Miriam Carey, is an executive board member of NAIN, the National Action Network, ran by Al Sharpton. She's a member of the East Brooklyn chapter of NAIN. The president of that particular chapter is a fellow by the name of Tony Herbert. Now, what we find extremely strange, and we pointed it up in our first presentation, is that why is it that Al Sharpton is not standing by the Carey family with this brutal shooting, this murder, this slaughter of this beautiful young dental hygienist in Washington, D.C., with her baby in the car? I mean, where is Al Sharpton? And that was a question that I had. We haven't heard him on this matter. But now to find out that she is actually an ex executive officer and member of the National Action Network and Sharpton has not come to her aid, does not that say to you that somebody has gotten to Sharpton and told him don't do what he normally does, which is get out there and raise sand so that the media will come and questions will be asked and guilty parties, if they are such, would be then brought to the bar of justice. And this has been nearly two months now and still there's been no call from Sharpton to one of his executive officers of his organization, the National Action network. Doesn't that appear to be strange to you that that is where we are in this, this entire matter? So we need to discover whether or not that there is a cover-up. We need to discover whether or not that that baby belongs to Barack Obama and Al Sharpton has been told to keep quiet. Uh, Valerie also stated to me sitting there in this, this excruciating pain. You know, it's one thing to lose a loved one, you know, through some disease, if you got leukemia or some other cancer or that or the other, and you kind of go day by day and people get prepared for the, you know, the announcement that you, you're finally gone. But when you got a healthy, beautiful, young sibling or daughter such as this, and you find out 
that she's just been murdered. It's very painful, such a public death, and in such a public way. You know, Valerie said to me that she did not find out that the Washington, D.C. Police Department, they released the information about who she was to the public before notifying the next of kin. Valerie says she didn't find out until 525 on the day of the event, a reporter from Connecticut called her to ask her about her sister's death out of the blue. And then he told her, if you don't know, you better turn on the television and news and you'll see it there. Isn't it the job of the officials to contact, which should not the uh, Washington DC police, Capitol Hill police should have contacted the New York City Police Department, the New York City Police Department, then go and contact the next of kin before the name of the person is released? Why is it that all of these things are happening and have happened to discredit Miriam Carey? I, as, as the Lord liveth, as the Lord liveth, I am not going to allow this discrediting of this young woman to proceed any further. We need some answers. First of all, why would fully armed police officers from the Secret Service, the, uh, the Capitol Hill Police, the Washington, D.C. Police, who are trained uh, to be tempered before pulling the trigger, before actually firing on someone, they go through months and months of training on judgment on when to do such an act. And yet, whether Miriam was still in the car or whether she got out of the car, the threat level was very low. And Valerie pointed this out as a, as a retired police sergeant herself, that women tend to possess a far lower threat level than men do in terms of violent confrontations. But for the police officer to also see she's got her baby and a baby seat in the back of the car, that just removes all threat altogether. For them to open fire the way that they did, and to this very day, the family does not know how many times she was shot. They don't know. The information has not been released. There's been no official notification coming from anybody. However, the FBI and the Secret Service did show up at her door one hour after the event looking to search and ask questions. So she refused to allow them to ask questions until she was able to contact uh, her attorney who uh, was able to come over and try to give uh, some directions, her attorney by the name of Eric Sanders, and you may have seen him on television. Well, guess what they did to him? After Eric Sanders, who's a no-nonsense attorney, who doesn't take tea for the fever, he doesn't do political favors, he doesn't curry up, he doesn't suck up politically and sell out people. Eric Sanders is not a sellout. So when they couldn't get him to sell out, the powers that be, whoever they are, went and found an old case back in 2005. Eric Sanders is an attorney. He works for a law firm. The law firm that Eric Sanders worked for back in 2008 had an outstanding case, not against Eric Sanders. He was simply the representative. They went and arrested him on federal charges. Just Now, this case has been out there since 2005. But to silence him, they arrested him, threw him in a federal jail, and would not give him due process. He sat as an attorney on a civil matter, by the way. This is a civil matter, not a criminal matter, and a matter that was not related to him. It was related to the firm that he represented. But he had to sit in jail, in a federal jail here in New York, for six days before they released him on bail in an effort to silence him. But my friends, you see where all this is going? You see where all this is going? Why isn't Al Sharpton out supporting one of his executive officers of the East Brooklyn National Action Network in the death of her sister? Why isn't he standing with, why didn't he attend the funeral? Who told him not to? I mean, why don't we hear outcry from Congressman Gregory Meeks? The, the Congressman Meeks lives in the, he's a congressional officer, of the, he's an African-American or black, if you will, congressperson, who lives in a region who is actually his region of borders. Why have we heard from Charles Rangel? He's a New York City congressman as well. Why, why and when, for a black woman, a beautiful woman, 
to be shot down in front of her baby and to be shot down in front of her family on Capitol Hill streets in front of the Capitol Hill building by a barrage of police bullets why is it that the black congressmen or white congressmen of men of note and nobility, why aren't they raising their voices against such a slaughter? Just the opposite happened. They went back into the halls of Congress after the event took place and had a four minute standing ovation applauding the Capitol Hill police officers, the Secret Service and Washington DC police officers in unison for, for assassinating, for executing this woman, and they applauded for four minutes and a standing ovation to these murderers in the Capitol Hill Police, Washington, D.C., and also the FBI, Secret Service, and whoever else was involved in this process. They applauded the death of this beautiful young woman. My friends, listen, we, we've got to discover what is going on here and why is this happening? Why? Did Obama order the cover-up? Did Miriam, Miriam Carey drive to Washington to see Obama about their relationship? And coming there, someone was prepared to start an altercation. And so they cooked up this story that the woman is crazy. Now, wait a minute, everybody. She lives alone, right? She owns her own condo. She works as a dental hygienist. She owns a 2010 automobile. Her baby was well cared for. She was not under any duress from any agency stating that she was not a proper, a proper mother. So they throw out this, they go and find some medication in the house when they search it. Or prescription, not the medication. They find she doesn't doesn't have the med. They find a prescription for postpartum depression and say, "Aha, she's a crazy woman." And they find an argument she had with someone over a parking spot. My friends, this is a cover up. This was an execution. This was an assassination. This was a brutal murder of a woman to cover up something going on down there in Washington. Something in Washington drove her down there, and we need to find out what it is. We need to find out why. And Valerie raised this as a question with me. Al Sharpton jumped up and down when it was reported that Barney's department store was involved in shop at, and frisk and Macy's was likewise and called a press conference and threatened and went and met with the executives of Barney's department store uh, to be able to so-called bring justice to black shoppers that were accused of stealing things out of Barney's department store on uh, Fifth Avenue or Madison Avenue here in New York City. Yet he hasn't called Valerie or her mother to stand with them. My friends, you and I know Al Sharpton. We know all the workings of blacks, leaders, and preachers, and all of that kind of a thing. We know that something is something here drove Miriam Carey down to Washington, D.C., and once she was there, they assassinated her. And let me also, while I don't give a lot of credence to Chuck Schumer, uh, Miriam, sister Valerie, and, and mother, and others were in the green room waiting to be interviewed on New Day at CNN. And Chuck Schumer, who is a senator from the state of New York, was being interviewed prior to them coming out of the green room and, and going before the cameras. And Chuck Schumer said not a word, nor did he offer any encouragement, but allowed this grieving family to be unconsoled by the senator from New York. Are we gonna allow this to continue, are we gonna allow this woman's death to be swept under the rug and whoever it was? I, I, Valerie does not know that her sister's child belong, is a love child belonging to Obama, but we need a paternity test. Let's get that done. The, Valerie told me as well that she was, when she did get an opportunity to see the body at the funeral, 
that was poorly attended by leaders, and I should have been there. I'll admit that. But that she was only able to see one of the places where the bullet entered her sister's neck. But from the shoulders down, she could not investigate. And the people at the funeral, they, if you ask me, I, I think that they, and I'm not even sure, I, I'm not sure that they've, they've given the full report about Valerie, I mean about Miriam, how many times she was shot and where she was shot and how and where her body was taken. No autopsy report has been signed. No notification has been given. And no, no outcry from leaders, black leaders or white leaders, congressional leaders, except they have applauded her death. We need to find out. I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you to uh, go to our website. I'm posting up a, um, I'm posting up an appeal that has been established by Valerie Carey that is asking the U.S. General Attorney General Eric Holder to conduct a swift and independent investigation into the murder. And this is Valerie writing, my sister Miriam Carey. I need you to go to our website and sign on as a signator saying we need an investigation and we need it now on the murder of Miriam Carey by the Capitol Hill police and by the Secret Service. So we need it, we need it. I want you to sign it, but I don't want you to stop there. I want you to contact every person that you have ever tweeted to, has ever tweeted to you, every Facebook friend, every email person, every news service and outlet and let them know, sign this petition. It'll be on our website shortly. Sign it and let's present these signatures to the Attorney General Eric Holder that an investigation could be had. In closing, my beliefs are these, and I cannot substantiate them, but I, I, when I heard of the death, I made the commitment, I'm gonna to get to the bottom of this, and we're gonna, we're gonna find out. We're gonna be strong, and we need to pray for the uh, attorney that was arrested, who initially represented, uh, Eric Sanders, who initially represented, we pray for him, we pray for the family, and pray that the mother can get through this and get to the bottom of why her daughter was slaughtered. And if, if her granddaughter is the daughter of the sitting president, Barack Hussein Obama, that child should not grow up thinking that one person is her father and that the sitting president of the United States of America is her father and that her father had her mother murdered and then covered it up using his powers to stop an investigation and to silence leaders and the American people from demanding an investigation. I'm James David Manning. I'm the Lord's servant.